You can now vectorize your images using Design AI really easily. I click on my image and come down to the little SVG button here. When I click on that, I get a few options. I'm gonna leave these as they are for now and click vectorize. Then we wait up here for it to process. We give it a moment and we get this image here, a vectorized skull that we can download as an SVG. Then I bring it into Adobe Illustrator, I zoom in, I can see it is a vector file. I can select areas, change the color, and print at pretty much any resolution. So that's really handy to have inside of an AI art platform. So uh, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper and see what this thing can do. Let's go back to the beginning of the process and actually start to generate some images so we can get a bit of an idea of what works best. I'm gonna come up here, text to image, and there's more than one way of doing this. But at the moment I have a sticker pop and I have a ninja skull emblem. So this is just gonna be something I'll play with for the sake of the video. It doesn't have to be anything in particular, but if I come up here to sticker pop, this is where I choose the style for my image. If I choose something like a impressionist harmony or something that's more like a painting, it's not really going to work. But I do have a few other things out there like American Society, things that have flat colors, clean, crisp outlines. And I would search for something that matches that style. You can go to all styles and explore, even things like coloring book if you just want a black and white vector or negative space. You have a few different options here, and I recommend going for the simple cartoony, flat, colory sort of styles to get the best result. But let's amp up the difficulty just a little bit by going to American Story. I've now got my prompt in here. I'm gonna turn that style intensity up a little bit and hit generate. So I'll give that a moment just to process. And we've got a few images here, which may be pretty useful. I'm gonna stick with this one because it has a little bit of detail, but it's still primarily flat. I double click to add it onto the canvas. I'm gonna come down to SVG at the bottom here and you see we can go through some of these options. We've got here stack shapes on top of each other or place shapes in cutouts and shapes below. Now this is actually a little bit important because if you cut shapes out of each other, sometimes you can get a little thin line between the actual objects, which can create some undesired effects. So I generally recommend using stack shapes on top of each other. I think that just gener generally produces a better result. Grouping by color, parent or layer, that's pretty much up to you. Uh, grouping by color makes more sense to me if you wanna group any, any of this, but uh, I'm just gonna leave it at none for now. Now, line fit tolerance. This will be, I guess, the precision, so to speak. So I'm gonna start off with coarse. And after we've produced this first image at coarse, I'm gonna try the other three settings so we can compare and see which looks best. And I hit vectorize on that image. And now our first image has been made with coarse. I hover over this and I get a view of the image pop up on screen. I can download it or I can even share it. It essentially downloads as an SVG file, which you can import into something like Illustrator, convert if you need to, but there's not really any other formats you can use at the moment, just SVG. So I'm gonna download this file for us to compare in a minute. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how to generate these, to generate art. But at the same time, you can also add in vector artwork or some other phrase to improve the likelihood of getting the style you want. Essentially, you wanna try and produce something that's clean with flat colors so it can be easily vectorized by the vectorizer tool. Let's skip ahead for a moment though. Let's compare the different levels of line fit tolerance to see which setting produces the best for the particular image we're working with. Now I have these all open in Illustrator as separate layers so I can do some direct comparisons. However, it's actually very difficult to spot any difference at all. And I actually think this is one of the best vectorizers that I've seen as I did a detailed comparison not long ago. But I did find one very tiny difference right down here. So this will be very hard to see. But at the moment, I'm gonna go back to course. And these are not in the exact same position, but they're pretty much right. You'll notice that we get some little jagged points in this circle. We've got a very jagged point there that seems to be pretty consistent. And around here, it's relatively smooth. As I go up to medium, it's actually a little bit smoother there, but a little more jagged here. About the same, a bit smoother there on medium. Smooth on fine, but a bit jagged on super fine. So there are minor differences. I just don't know if they're really worth worrying about. But let's zoom out and have a bit more of a look. So we're getting into the nitty gritty a bit, but if I zoom in here, right in here, you can see this looks pretty smooth. And this is coarse. I go to medium. We get a bit of a weird line effect there. Fine, seems to tune that out. And super fine seems to be pretty good. So far, if you had to nitpick, I would say fine is probably the best, but Honestly, overall, this is pretty decent. Now, again, 
I want to mention that an actual vector artist will always do a better job because there's precision to vector art with the points, the curves, that you're just not going to get with an automated process. This is just, if you need to blow something up and print it at a large size, this is one really solid option for doing that. Or even if you just need to, something that's a little bit higher resolution and the image is suitable. Coming back to Design AI, the other cool thing is I can click here, delete. I can also import images to vectorize. So I come over here to upload. I'm going to grab this Wolverine image I made on Midjourney a while ago and import that. So I come into position and I click the SVG button. I'm going to stick with fine. I feel like if you're nitpicky, that's probably the best version. This here probably makes more of a difference when you place cutouts, shapes and cutouts, but stacking images on top of each other kind of eliminates some of those quality issues. I vectorize and let that go for a moment. I think it did a pretty good job. Now, again, I'm back in Illustrator with this image. And if you can see from here, it's a little bit pixelated. I turn on the vector. Obviously, it's much sharper, cleaner. There's a few funny little areas here. But overall, it's a pretty good result. If you're trying to produce a sticker or something that wasn't too big, this would be a great tool. If you need it larger, you might want to do some edits. But if you know Illustrator, this is not a bad place to start. But we zoom in on a few areas. Like if we zoom in on the face a bit, we have the bitmap and we have the vector. Lines are smoother. There's still a few little artifacts here to be expected with an automatic vector converter. But overall, that's pretty solid and smooth and there's no weird little sort of gaps in the line. So this is great for if you want to put those images on top of each other. But going to other areas such as down here on the arm, it has done a great job of working out how that arm should look. The hairs aren't as detailed as it could be, but that's just the way it is with automatic vector conversion. Overall, as far as vector converters go, this is a pretty solid tool. So it's very handy and I highly recommend you check it out. I'm gonna show you a few more on the screen now just to show you how they turned out. And so I tried something a little simpler like this green blob and because uh, a lot of vector, vector graphics look a lot like this. I'm gonna zoom in and we can see the pixelation here in the face. I turn off the bitmap and it's pretty clean the few funny little artifacts here and there. Overall though, pretty solid, but a little bit of cleaning up would definitely have this looking pretty good. So there might be a setting you can use to get a better result with these simpler images, but I mean, it's not much to really fix up if you need it for a simpler image. Everything's pretty smooth. It's got some pretty decent curves, just a few little bumps on the road. I had this image in a previous video of a Terminator pig, which due to its sort of detailed choppy nature, you turn it off, and it's actually pretty good. You can get away with a few little bumps because with this is so much detail, it kind of gets lost in it. So for more detailed cartoony images, these vector converters are pretty handy, but this one in particular, I think has done probably one of the best jobs I've seen done to this particular image. So it's a pretty powerful tool. And I think if you're going to be auto vectorizing stuff, definitely check out Design AI because you have all the other tools you can use as well, like the AI art generator, the editor, and everything else. Have this black and white sloth, now this is gonna be interesting because it has a whole lot of noise and stuff in here. So I turn off the bitmap. It's done an all right job of sort of converting those noise into those noises into dots. So it's actually remained pretty true. I'm actually pretty impressed. Uh, there's yet to be a vectorizing program which really nails it as good as a professional. But as far as auto, as far as saving a ton of time and getting something that you can print uh, without needing to be perfect, this is probably the bit, one of the best ones I've seen apart from vectorizer.ai. I'll link to that in the description as well as designers if you want to check that out. So both the tools will be linked to below. Finally, I have this car image. If I zoom in here, we can see it's a bit pixelated. I turn off the bitmap. And it's done a pretty decent job of that too. The lines are not a perfect consistency, but for an automated process, pretty good and pretty consistent. And that would make a decent sticker and print pretty well as a vector. But overall, it's a pretty simple tool to use. Very easy. Gets decent results, especially for what we're currently working with. Hopefully in the future, they have ways of AI better predicting some of the corners and sharpening things up and smoothing things out where they need to be. And although this technology of vectorizing automatically has been around for a long, long time, especially in like Corel Draw and things like that, it's really starting to pick up now that people want to be able to generate images with AI and people need to do things a bit quicker, especially when you're in some kind of visual art industry, you're a graphic designer, spending all day vectorizing a graphic sometimes is not worth it. And a tool like this is perfect. So if I had to recommend a vectorizing tool, it'd be vectorizer.ai or this so far, I think has done probably as good a job, not quite as good as vectorizer.ai, but I think it's a solid number two in my opinion. 
but you get all the other AI tools associated with the account for a similar price. So value for money, Vectorizer, it can't really stand up to design.ai when it comes to creating vector images. But I'll pop links to both those platforms in the description below, including this one, that's design.ai. So check that out. And once again, thanks for watching the video, guys. Have a play with that tool. It's simple and very easy to use. Otherwise, if you like the video, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again next time. Have a great day.